Today could be a huge day. I got a call from a guy who says he has two of the rarest coins ever. If these pieces are real, this could be a very expensive day. You must be Walter. Yes, I am. Your phone call got me a little excited. So this is it. That is the half Disney. The other is the liver toss. This is pretty damn amazing. The half Disney could be considered the first American coin. Yes, very rare piece, very rare. One of the things I don't get about early American coins, were eagles that skinny back then? <laughs> we didn't feed them very much. <laughs> I'm here to sell these two really, really rare coins, the Hef Disney and the Libertas. I really love collecting the coins, but I need to sell a couple of them off so I can buy some other ones at an auction. And I'm just hoping to make a good deal here. This is really, really cool. The Hef Disney was minted in 1792. 1792, we just elected George Washington president. We finally have a constitution. And since we're a country, we got to start making our own currency here. But the problem was, for the first 50 years of our country, the mint never got its act together. We had difficulties getting the silver and the gold and everything else like that. And I couldn't imagine being a merchant right after the Revolutionary War in this country, because if you had any kind of store, you took British pounds and French francs and Spanish reals, because there's just always a shortage of American coins. But this is the very first one. And um, the rumor has it that George Washington basically jacked Martha's silverware to have it made. <laughs> that is the story, no documentation about it, but that is the story about that. You know what, I'm gonna stick with the story because I like it. You yeah, got it, okay. Makes George Washington look a little gangster. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Libertas Americana. This is absolutely great. Benjamin Franklin had this commissioned in France, right? Yes. In 1781, he helped design this to get France to mint that coin on behalf of the American friendship in France. I know the baby is the United States, right? Right. And the lion is England. Of course. This lady right here is France? That's correct. She's protecting the child, the United States, from England. That's super cool. And then in 1783, Thomas Jefferson was in Paris. And he's the one that took these medals back to America. And he passed it on to the senators and the congressmen. It's pretty damn amazing. They're all graded by PCGS and NGC. So we know they're good. How much? <laughs> For the liver toss, 200,000. For the half Disney, I'm looking for $600,000. $800,000 for the pair. Ooh, damn. Um, that is a lot of money. Uh, these are two of the most desirable coins for collectors there is. And $800,000 might not be a bad price. But there's no way I can even consider spending a small fortune on them before I have an expert I trust come in the shop and check them out. Do you mind if I go make a few phone calls real quick? Sure. I will be right back. Oh, I was pretty excited when you called. These are amazing. I think one of the really great things is both of these coins are really closely tied with the founding fathers. When these 1792 half Disney's are being made, Thomas Jefferson actually bought $75 worth, which is about 1,500 of these. And he spent these on the way back to Monticello. You know, it's our first American coinage. That's what really makes them special. Very first coins. And this one, the Libertas Americana. This is one of my favorite coins because it's so beautiful. This is a silver example. So they made these in copper, silver, and they actually made a couple gold, but those were lost in the French Revolution. The silver coins are much rarer than the copper examples, and most of them are not this condition. All right, so um, what do you think they would go for? Well. The 1792 half Disney with the right buyer would probably bring five to six hundred thousand. All right, and this one? <laughs> the Libertas Americana, I would say for the right buyer for this piece, um, two hundred thousand dollars would be about right. Okay, well, thanks, man. Okay, I hope that helps you. Good luck, thanks. Yeah. If Rick can buy these coins, they're very, very popular. There's a lot of people who'd love to own them, and he would have no trouble selling them, so I hope he's able to purchase them. Okay, first off, the half Disney, um, it's pretty damn amazing. And I'm sure I'll never hold another one in my hands. 
but if I was to buy it and then I couldn't sell it, it would put a financial burden on me. So I'm going to pass on this one right here. I'm just going to let you know that. This one, I have multiple customers. And even if they don't buy it, I think I can eventually do something with it. So 140000 140. $140,000. You heard the man. You have to make some money. I understand this. I can see, how about 180? Mm. I will give you $150,000. At that price, I feel comfortable. You couldn't do 160. I will go 150. I, I think it's more than a fair price. It's a deal. Sweet. I will meet you right over there, and we will do some paperwork. You take that one. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. I'll meet you right over there. OK. One of these days, there's going to be a coin with my face on it. <laughs> Jeff. Hey. Mr. Cointastic, what do you have today? <laughs> I've got a great coin I think you'll like. OK. What do we got? This is a 1797 half dollar. That is something special. So this is the coin where the eagle on the back looks more like a turkey? Yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's not the most majestic eagle ever produced by the US Mint. Yes, um, not a really strong, proud eagle. No. <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop today trying to sell my 1797 half dollar. This particular coin was only made for two years, 1796 and 1797. And it's one of the rarest type coins of all United States coins. There's only 300 known to exist. I'm asking $200,000 for the coin. I'm willing to negotiate a little bit, but not very much, because I paid pretty close to that for it. This is really amazing. $1,797 United States half dollar. The rarest American coin. After the Revolutionary War, we got the Constitution together. We're a country. We elect our first president. We elect our first Congress. And we had to make all the stuff for a government. I mean, there was no bent. We had to make them all. But when this coin was made, no one uses American coins. So a lot of these really early coins, they just melted it down for silver value. I imagine 80% of them just ended up getting melted down eventually. This is called the draped bust, because the way her dress is like, it's draped. This type of coin they made 4,000-ish? Just a little bit less than that, 3,918 3, to be exact. All right, um, and... It's in good shape, which is also amazing, because you get a coin that's 225 years old, they get worn out. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> Someone saved that one, obviously. OK. Um, what do you want for it? You know, I would sell it for 200000 which I think is a fair price, considering how nice it is. Um, like 170 is a better price. I, I can't sell it for that. I'd sell it for 190 So you'll sell it for 180 well, that's 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 tough. I mean, I'm not making a much. I mean, I got a guy who probably pay me right around 190. Right. Could you do 185? You know what? I'd rather make 5,000 instead of making nothing. Okay, <laughs> I think that's great. So 185, we got a deal. Sure, I'll sell okay. it. Normally we go to the pawn counter, but let's just do this in the back office. I agree. Okay. This thing definitely cost a pretty penny. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? So what do you got? I've got something here that is more valuable than anything I guarantee you've ever seen in this shop. I have a clump of rupees that were minted in 1702 by the son of the man who built the Taj Mahal. Man's name was Muhayuddin Muhammad Aurangzeb Aramgir, otherwise known as Emperor Aurangzeb. That took you a while to remember that, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> it did. <laughs> This clump of treasure coin is known as the Taj Mahal treasure because it truly is the only sunken treasure related to the Taj Mahal dynasty. The reason why I'm here today is because um, I had these in an auction here and uh, it did not sell, so I'm coming over to see the guys here and um, uh, hopefully they'll open their wallets. So what can you tell me about this? They were minted in Surat, India. They went to the bottom of the ocean in 1702 and were recovered by Arthur C. Clarke. 
and his dive partner. Didn't he write a few books about it? Yeah, he wrote two books about it. In fact, before he really started writing heavily about science fiction, he was an avid scuba diver. And when they discovered it in 1961, Clark and his dive partner, Mike Wilson, swam over the edge of a reef and here this shipwreck and all these silver coins were laying out all over the bottom. This is one of the most well-documented treasure discoveries in history. I've read books about this wreck. Ever since I started working in the pond business, I've wanted sunken treasure, and this is the mother load. I mean, I've had a few individual coins come in, but nothing like this. They were minted in Surat, India, and then were headed on to the Orient along the spice route, but they never made it there. They were wrecked in a typhoon and wound up on a shipwreck there, and they sat underwater for that long. The reason why they're in such good shape is because they were laying up against some iron object, most likely a cannon. And the cannon oxidizes faster than the silver does, just like a sink on your boat does. Yeah. So that's why coins aren't touched. The natural electrolysis in the water went through the cannon instead of the silver first, so the silver is perfectly preserved. So how did you come in possession of them? Well, I did a documentary with Arthur C. Clarke in 1993. His family consigned it to me, and we've been trying to sell it. You got paperwork on him, right? Yes, signed by Arthur C. Clarke. Everything he's telling me about this adds up with everything I've read. It's authentic, it's the real thing, and I cannot believe it is sitting in my shop. And everything's the real deal here. It's, yep. you know, they're authentic coins. They're not cast, they're definitely stamped. How much do you want for it? If these guys want it, they're gonna have to bring out stacks and stacks of money, because it's gonna cost a lot. So how much do you want for it? Uh, I'd like to get 700,000 for it. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money because we know the rarity. There were only three of them in the world, now there's only two. Originally there were three clumps of coins, uh, the one that's here in the U.S., one that's in the Clark family archives, and a third that was in a museum in Colombo, Sri Lanka, but when the uh, 2004 tsunami hit, the sea reclaimed that clump of coins and they've never found it, so now there's only two of them in the world. I really, really want this. I mean, this thing is truly incredible. But tying up three quarters of a million dollars in one item, it could bankrupt this shop. I'd love to have it, it's a cool item. I mean, I, I would love to have it in my shop, but I'm not gonna spend that kind of money. If I buy this off you, mm -hmm. I gotta put it in an auction, and it might take five or 10 years. Right. Which means my money's tied up for a long time. It's an investment. No, it's a gamble. My biggest problem here is, this guy's already told me it didn't meet reserve and auction. I have to buy this thing at a price where I can sell it quickly and make a profit. All I can do now is make an offer. <sighs> um, I want to give you 200 grand for it. 200? Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, no. that's, I, you know, I can go a little bit more, but it's not going to be much. That's what I could do. I mean, there's some things even too expensive for me. I respect that. I got I to gotta hold out for more. But uh, hey, thanks very much. Uh, okay. Thanks for your time. Yeah. You know? All right. Sorry for <laughs> new business. I mean, you just, you just got to look at it my perspective, yep. and it's a lot of damn money. <laughs> that it is. I knew it was a long shot, and I'm really disappointed I wasn't able to buy the treasure. But at the same time, I'm a little bit relieved, because if I had to tell the old man I shelled out a quarter of a million dollars, he would have kicked my ass. <laughs> That's tape on it. Hey, son. What do you think of the hat? It's a hat. Well, do you think they'll sell? As long as you don't wear one. Or do you like this one better? Hold on, let me open this. What is that? I don't know, it's addressed to me, Richard Harrison. Well, there's another Richard Harrison that works here, that's me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's for me. You sure it's not mine? Because I'll take it. Nope. This is a 1879 Stella, a $4 gold piece that was never issued to the public. The reason they call it a Stella, see the big star on the back? Yeah. Stella is Latin for star. Incredible coin. Why is it coming through the mail? Jeff, coin dealer I work with plenty of times, he just got it, and I might be buying it off him. Sometimes people can't make it in the shop for one reason or the other. But when it's something as cool as the Stella Gold piece, I really want to see it. Once I see it in person, the seller and I can strike a deal, or I'll send the item packing. So I need you to do the video chat with Jeff. Why don't you do it in your office? It doesn't work on my computer. I promise you it does. It doesn't work on the we computer downstairs. Computer. Just make it work, please. Just say you don't know how to do it. It wouldn't work right. You don't know how. It's irritating. Can you just get them on the thing? Here, you just press this. It's not that big of a deal. Jeff, how's it going? Doing good, doing good. So we got it. 
Uh, good, good. So where did you get this? I got that from a client, a person I've been dealing with for a while, and I've been looking for Estella for quite a while. And uh, when it came across my desk, I knew it was a coin you might like. So what's the story with this thing again? In the 1870s, the U.S. Mint was trying to come up with a universal currency. They were trying to get every country to make a gold coin with the same amount of metal in it. Yeah, it was an idea of trying to facilitate international trade. The Mint made these coins. They made a little over 400 of them. And they handed them out to members of Congress to see if they get their approval, yes or no, should they go forward with the project. They ended up voting no on it, but the congressmen got to keep the coin. Most of them brought them home, put them in a safe place, and to this day, they're like amazing condition because every one of these coins when they gave them out were like in proof condition. But this one actually has a little bit of wear. Yeah, but its condition adds to its desirability a little bit because in a nicer condition, they start over $200,000. So for an extraordinarily rare coin, it's, I would say, quote, unquote, affordable. OK, so uh, how much you want for it? Uh, I'd like to get $100,000 for it. Would you take 90 grand for it? No, I couldn't do 90. 91? I could come down to 95,000. And that's, uh, you know, that's a great deal for a coin that's usually almost impossible to find below $100,000. I'll go 92? Yeah, I would, I would sell it to you at that. 92,000? Thanks so much for sending it to me. I got a check in the mail to you. OK, that, that sounds right. good, Rick. Thanks a lot. See you later, man. Take care, buddy. So you sure you don't like this hat? You know how insane it is doing business with you? You just spent $92,000. I know, it's it's all relatives. So I need, OK, don't worry, I'll get it sold. But I, just leave me alone. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Good. I'd like to sell this gold coin if I could. OK. Eight escudos. This is a Spanish stamp here. This is like the royal crest of Spain. So where did you get this? I got that from my grandfather when he died. Uh, he left a safe full of contents. Any other cool things in the safe? Not really, no. No holy grails or anything like that? No, no. not to my knowledge. <laughs> I'm going into the pawn shop today to see if I can sell my grandfather's gold coin. He kept it in plastic, so it's in really good shape. Um, looks really old, and I don't really have any use for it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what they can do for me here. Do you know much about this? I don't know much about it at all. OK. I know a little bit about the coin. I mean, it's eight escudos. Um, it was from Lima, Peru. They had, like, the worst mines in the world. I mean, it was 2,000 feet deep. You would go down. There was cave-ins. There was no ventilation. There was no nothing. It was just really, really brutal. But it made a fortune for the Spanish. Sure. When the Spanish occupied Latin America and South America, they used forced slave labor to work the mines. It was a brutal and dangerous job, and the life expectancy was short. Coins back then were weird. The size didn't have to be exactly correct. It just had to have the right amount of gold, the right weight, and the right purity. When they stamped these coins out, you didn't always get a great strike like this. It's almost too good to be true. This coin is in exceptional condition, and I've seen similar coins fetch thousands of dollars at auction. So if this is a real piece of Spanish treasure from the 1700s, I want it. So do you want to pawn it or sell it? I want to sell it. What were you looking to get out of it? Uh, I'd like to get 2,000 if I could. OK. Um, this coin is in really great shape, but this is easily counterfeited. There's a lot of fakes out there. So I'd really like someone to take a look at it, okay. if you don't mind. No. I got a buddy who knows everything there is to know about these. Let him come in, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Sounds great. OK. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Carl, how's it going? Good to see you, Rick. Why'd you get me up so early? <laughs> well, I called you down here for this. It was one of those things that looked a little too good to be true. I'm an expert on Spanish colonial coins. If you want to know anything about Spanish colonial coins, I'm your man. That's a Lima Eight Escudo, and in this corner there's an L, that means Lima Peru Mint. Eight is the denomination, biggest gold coin the Spanish made. The PVS across the center is an abbreviation for the Latin term plus ultra, meaning more beyond these two columns, which represent the Pillars of Hercules, which was the Straits of Gibraltar. They used to think you sailed out past there, you'd fall off the edge of the world. A few years back, there was a big scandal on some counterfeit. And that's why I wanted to have it checked out. Did you throw that on the scale? Yeah, I did. It's 27.0 grams. That is right on. Very rarely will they be right on 27 grams. Most castings are underweight. I know your concern is, could it be counterfeit? And there are a lot of counterfeit pieces going around. 
from everything I can see on this one, I'd say it's it's absolutely genuine. Okay. Excellent. So what do you think this is worth? I would put a price tag of eighteen thousand on it. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you coming in, Carl. Thank you, Rick. Congratulations. Thank you I, very much. It's like finding treasure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so the big question is, what do you want mm -hmm. for it? Sounds like 18000 to me. No, I don't. Why would we give you ten grand for it? How about twelve? How about ten grand? No, I can I could take it somewhere else. How about ten five? I could I could pack it up and go. I would I wouldn't take anything less than eleven thousand. <laughs> I guess I gotta do what I gotta do. 11,000. 11,000. Okay. Got a right. deal. Thank All you. Right. Let's go do the paperwork. You got it. I'm shocked at how much the coin was worth. I had no idea. Considering I was only asking for $2,000 when I first got here, and now I'm getting 11,000, I feel very happy with that.